Well, our next guest is an LSAT tutor, a podcast host, and a 23-time Jeopardy! champion. Matea Roach is back on the popular game show this week in its Tournament of Champions. Last night, she won in an exhibition match. To date, she has earned an estimated $600,000 U.S., and Matea Roach joins us now. Congratulations on the winning streak. Thank you so much. And uh, obviously, you have to be ready to answer just about everything, including uh, some very meta moments on the program. We actually have a clip of you from last night's program answering a question about Alex Trebek. We'll play that now. Alex's hometown was this city, long known as the nickel capital of the world. Matea. What's Sudbury? Yes, nailing the Canadiana again. All right, you nailed that one. Um, how do you prepare to answer all of these various questions that you have to be ready for on Jeopardy? So I think the answer is that you, you can't really prepare for everything that they're going to throw at you because the variety that you're served with is just, it's so much. And so I think uh, Ken Jennings said it best. I think he once said in an interview that Jeopardy rewards a lifetime of paying attention to many different things. And so I think the real preparation is just, you know, reading, being an active listener and just taking in all of the information that you encounter in your day to day. Taking all the information in, taking in the experience, how would you describe what like what what this has been like for you? Um, I would say it's been a whirlwind for sure. Um, I mean, I am my life is is so different like right now than I expected it would be at the start of this year, right? I, I think I thought I was going to be, you know, attending law school, hopefully. I certainly didn't think I was going to have the kind of financial security and freedom that I now am enjoying. Um, but I would say the other word I would use to describe it is fun. Like this whole experience and getting to play the game is just plain fun. And I mean, as was seen in the exhibition match last night, um, it's so much fun to play Jeopardy even when there's no actual money on the line. <laughs> no doubt. Um, you mentioned financial security. As you know, Matea, here on uh, B&M Bloomberg, we talk a lot about uh, investing for the future. People were so interested in your situation that we asked our audience back in May on Twitter, uh, what should you use your winnings to invest in? Uh, we got a few answers here. I'm going to run them uh, by you right now. Uh, investing in Canada's energy sector, in agriculture, maybe some exchange-traded funds that are tied to blue chip stocks. Um, what are your thoughts? Have you been thinking about investing areas? Yeah, um, so I will say I'm not super knowledgeable about investing. I would say I have like a good layperson's knowledge, but nothing really beyond that. Um, I do actually have some investments that are in ETFs tied to blue chips. Um, so that is something that I did actually do just because it seemed like a fairly safe option. Um, in terms of like what else has been guiding um, my investment decisions, I think for me, um, investing sustainably is something that I consider to be very important. So. To me, I think if I'm going to be investing in energy, for instance, I would definitely be looking at investing in like green tech as opposed to investing in oil and gas, just because first off, like the price of oil has been so volatile lately, but also it's like an industry that is at some point going to be on its way out, right? Whereas green tech, I think there's like a lot of growth opportunity there. But like I said, I don't really know a lot about investing. I've been, you know, trying to... I guess, cobble together information from various sources that I trust that'll help me make some good decisions and hopefully set myself up, um, you know, because it's it's not every day that you get a windfall like I've experienced this year. Well, no doubt. And it's opened a lot of doors as well. You're hosting a podcast now. Yeah, uh, I am. So I'm, I'm currently hosting a show called The Backbench, which is on the Candleland Network of Podcasts. And so what it is, is it's a Canadian politics panel show. So uh, I get to moderate discussions with a sort of rotating cast of panelists that we have from various parts of the country, sort of various political tendencies. And we've been having some really great discussions so far. Okay, so on the road ahead, as everyone is tuning in and very curious, give us a sense, what is next for you on this Jeopardy journey? Well, I mean, the Jeopardy portion of the journey may well be over, right? I mean, for most contestants, uh, you kind of do your regular season games. If you win enough, you maybe get invited back for the Tournament of Champions. And then, you know, sometimes they've done in the past special events, um, things like anniversary tournaments where they bring together uh, iconic players from the history of the show. Um, but as far as I know, um, there's no imminent plans for me to be playing Jeopardy again. So at this point, what I'm really looking forward to is, you know, continuing to do things like work on my podcast, um, you know, hopefully perhaps uh, get more involved in like writing and that kind of work. Um, I had an essay out in the Toronto Star over the summer, and that was something that, you know, 
was interesting and felt exciting to me to do. So uh, that's kind of what's ahead for me. Um, Jeopardy, I am happy to go back if they want to invite me, but I, I don't know uh, exactly whether I'll be on the show again after this Tournament of Champions, of course, which is still airing. Absolutely.